my lovely, lovely imps. Today, we are gathered here once again because it is that time. It is the time in which we gather together to do the thing that we set this time aside for, which is, of course, a drama mama. That's right, drama mama. The part of the show where we talk about an internet drama that has surpassed the level of drama and entered into something that actually has a serious effect or something actually genuinely impactful to talk about. And today, we are going to be revisiting one of the messiest and most explosive and unfortunately emblematic situations that we've covered on this show, which is of course the Illuminati drama. Now, I've been covering the Illuminati section, or the Illuminati <laughs> drama, for a very, very long time. And you will be able to see those links down below in the comments section or in the description. Um, I have a bunch of videos on this because we've been following it for a very, very long time. And uh, today, we have a pretty major update. That's right. That's right. Once again, we are hiking up the Illuminati Drama Mama Mountain. So strap in, get your boots nice and aired out, make sure your water bottle is full. So I am not going to be able to do a, a full summary of everything that we've talked about in all of the previous episodes of, uh, uh, of Drama Mama in which we talk about Illuminati, but the situation has, over time, basically gotten progressively worse and worse. It started with what would seem to be a, a fairly minor uh, social media spat. Um, a, a, a side comment uh, from Illuminati turned into a, a, an allegation of, uh, of, of plagiarism. Um, but it, it had contained itself mostly just to a, a stray comment on social media. When, when that was confronted, it blew up. And from there, it's gone downhill. Uh, a number of people who have been involved with uh, uh, Illuminati have come forward over the course of months now uh, and told their stories. And as it turns out, the organization that she was running, the YouTube channels that she was running, uh, appeared to have been run with uh, a lot of, of very, very questionable and outright abusive practices. Uh, today, we are going to be watching a video by Oz Media. Uh, this is a video called Dear Illuminati. And it's a fairly long one, so we're going to be sitting here going through this for a bit of time. I hope that you'll stay here with me and listen to what we have to say. Um, this video uh, it was created by Oz Media, who is a uh, former partner of, uh, of Illuminati. But it's not just a, uh, a situation of a, a spurned ex or anything like that, because... As it turns out, Illuminati and Oz Media were not just, uh, uh, you know, in a relationship as partners, uh, but they were also business partners. They also shared a house, and they also opened that house up to other employees of their company. And this has culminated in a legal battle between Oz Media and Illuminati also known as Blair. So you'll hear us use those, you'll hear us use those names interchangeably. Illuminati is Blair. Uh, if this all sounds like, a, you know, an unknown, indecipherable, ancient speech to you, I recommend you go watch the videos that are going to be linked down below because that will get you prepped up for what we're about to talk about. Um, it's likely that what we're going to talk about here is going to be fairly heavy. But also, this video uh, was created, um, according to Oz Media, this video was created uh, in consult with uh, their lawyer. So, while it's unlikely to be as, uh, uh, as emotional as some of the previous things that we've seen, it is likely to go over quite a lot of things. I thought that it would be very important for us to watch this video as this video marks the beginning of the real legal conflict, 
what we have seen before was uh, threats of legal action, and we saw the very first steps of legal action being taken. Um, but now it seems that uh, Illuminati and Oz Media will indeed be going to court. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Let's watch Dear Illuminati by Oz Media. Well, here we are. Round two. Blair, if you or your lawyers are watching this, I implore you to at least watch the outro, preferably before June 7th. This is not the monstrosity of a documentary against Blair's actions. If anything, think of this as the prologue. We're here right now because Blair, owner of Pyramid Entertainment LLC, or better known as her public YouTube personality Illuminati, is currently in the process of suing me, as well as other prior employees for defamation and other claims. This video, as well as its subsequent parts, will serve as a public record of exactly what is going on behind the scenes. Throughout these videos, I will actively be showing all and any evidence related to dismantling her claims against me, as well as the other parties she's involved in this misplaced legal crusade of hers. Seeing as I know this video will be heavily scrutinized by Blair's legal team, hi, and perhaps even shown in front of a court, also hi, I am fully willing to submit this video and its subsequent parts to the courts as further evidence as I am willing to stand by these words as I'm treating this as though I'm speaking under oath. I am also not stating this to add an air of authority to my words as Blair's legal team has previously proposed. I want the truth known. And to do so, I'm going to publicly dissect her claims within this lawsuit to essentially lay bare my defense, as well as the defense for other parties involved. My section of the lawsuit will be covered in part two, as I'm awaiting litigation privileges before I explore my portion of the lawsuit publicly. Despite this, there is still plenty of information on the ongoings in this video. My lawyer is aware I'm doing this. These legal proceedings have been ongoing for the past eight to nine months at this point in time. If it wasn't for the assistance I received with the GoFundMe back in September, I would not have been able to mount a legal defense. Some of you will recall us covering uh, uh, that GoFundMe uh, back in the day. Of the amount donated, GoFundMe takes a fee with each donation. This can be seen on screen here with this nice little chart breakdown they provide. At this point in time, which more information can be found as an update in the original GoFundMe, this lawsuit has cost over $40,000. I've been posting all of my legal invoices for full transparency and more will be posted soon. The redacted information within them is information subject to attorney-client privilege, which also spells out my current legal strategy. This would be foolish to allow Blair's legal team access. This is why the redactions are as heavy as they are, as they include itemized lists of my lawyer's actions throughout the case's initial proceedings. Despite how much has been spent so far, the legal proceedings are still in the beginning phases. Hypno, if you have a link to that, I'd appreciate it. Uh, I'm not, I, I was not aware of that video when we first started this segment. So if you have a link to that, I'll check it out. Maybe it would be a, uh, maybe we can react to that before we finish, but I, I don't know for sure what that is. Blair's lawsuit, in my opinion, relies on the misconstruing of facts and utilizes a personally curated timeline which she has constructed in order to gain the bare minimum standards of having this case proceed. Because I'm exhausted with the, in my opinion, legal shenanigans Blair is currently pulling, this video exists. We will be delving into that timeline and gutting it point by point as both her lawyers and judge seem to be fully unaware that I am not the real cause of her pain and misery. Blair is. Blair's actions are the reason we are here, and I'll be demonstrating that shortly with a detailed timeline of events before we move into the dissection of her claims. If you would like a full breakdown of every court filing to date, I would recommend YouTuber Matt Caster. For now, I'll be focusing on what's current and minimizing the hundred plus pages okay. of legal proceedings down to only what's necessary over the next two parts. For the next proceedings, I'll be launching a new GoFundMe because I have nearly exhausted the prior amounts donated. All donations will be used to defend all parties in opposition to Blair, not just myself. All future legal invoices will be posted as they come from all parties who are in need of the funding. My goal with these uploads, assuming wow. Blair does not take my offer, is to not only lay my defense bare for all legal parties to see, 
but for the online community as a whole. I intend to provide ample documentation to justify to all of you why another round of crowdfunding is being posted. This isn't just for myself anymore. This is also to defend employees that Blair is bringing legal action against as well. If Blair does accept my offer within the outro, I will be refunding the new GoFundMe once all terms are met and the lawsuit is officially over, court filings and all. If you're curious as to why I'm even offering Blair a potential settlement in the outro, that will be explained there, as there are numerous factors in my personal life that I've recently had to heavily consider and prioritize minimizing or even removing causes of stress. That being said, I have no issue, hesitations, or fears in connection to proceeding with this lawsuit. I am confident in the direction things are going, and I just want to offer a path to end this before we're stuck in this for years on end. This will be further explored in the outro. All right. Let's As see stated it. in my September update video, Blair and I dated, just in case this context is missing. It was never my goal to make any of this about relationship drama. However, despite the actual timeline of events which have occurred, Blair is trying to paint her entire downfall on YouTube as being nothing more than my actions towards her as a jealous ex. I'm not jealous towards your current partner, Blair, only sympathetic. I encourage all of you to fact check this timeline as I go. I'm being both as detailed and as quick as I can here because again, Blair, in my opinion, is actively obfuscating the timeline in her lawsuit in an attempt to paint herself as a victim who did nothing to deserve the scrutiny delivered onto her. On April 20th, 2023, the story begins with a tweet produced by Blair which attacked Legal Eagle for copying her style. Legal Eagle would quickly retort, explaining he had been using these standard practice editing styles, which included standard documentarian effects such as the classic skeuomorphism torn paper effect as well as the simple action of highlighting text, which all can easily be found as stock templates online. In this Twitter thread, Blair had also levied accusations against members of Legal Eagle's team as proof of this copying by showing an editor of Legal Eagle asking for help with how a certain effect is achieved. This is standard practice amongst YouTubers and editors. Blair responded to Legal Eagle by deleting these accusations and did not provide a public apology or any form of public justification for her actions. This further stirred the pot and made people ask questions. This same day, April 20th, HBomberGuy would post a tweet publicly displaying an example of Blair copying a documentary herself, although he used the word plagiarism. At the time, I found it incredibly telling that HBomber guy had such a specific clipped comparison ready to go that same day, with an exact video. I do wonder if Blair had the same realization that I did, that the only way Harris would have a clip like this is if something major was in the works. Foreshadowing is a literal- On April 23rd, three days later, we would see Click post his Twitter thread. I emphasize the three days portion because at this point, Blair was still yet to address the Legal Eagle scenario, pushing Click, a former collaborator of hers, to publicly distance himself from her to avoid the flack that her actions had been causing for any and all who were at any point associated with her. This is not an accusation. I am just stating the unforeseen cause and effect of Blair's documented actions. This same night, from a bathtub apparently, Wonderstruck, now known as Hi I'm Wonder, would post his Twitter thread detailing his prior dealings with Blair, as well as the harm that he felt he suffered when close to her. I was unaware that Wonder was going to make this tweet. He and I normally aren't on voice call when he's in the tub. This will be important later when we move into the details of the lawsuit, as Blair claims Wonder and I had essentially masterminded her downfall. I didn't know about the threat until I received a now deleted DM from Blair, asking me what she should do, followed by several missed calls from her. I wish I had a record of this Discord DM, but by the next morning, this DM would be deleted. Because Blair did not publicly provide a reason or explanation towards her actions, and with the emergence of HBomberGuy, Click, and Wonderstruck's threads, it left Twitter frenzied for answers. Those who were familiar with my connections to Blair, as it was public knowledge we were roommates, would begin to DM me or brigade my livestream chats with questions on the situation. Questions such as if I still supported Blair and if I could provide a reason or explanation for her actions. It was because of users constantly asking me to answer on behalf of Blair, as well as my past colleagues, finally speaking out, that I broke my silence and posted my thread. A thread where I took accountability for my actions in support of Blair and defended the credibility of my colleagues. I posted my Twitter thread April 24th, 2023 at roughly 4am my time. 
That same morning, I had this text message interaction with Blair. Please note, it is only because of the current trajectory of this lawsuit, with myself awaiting litigation privileges on these matters, that I am no longer leaving my information redacted, as I had previously intended to do so now one year ago. Blair, Monday, April 24th at 8.24 a.m. So I just saw your tweets, and now I understand why when I called you, you didn't answer. I'm going to take some time to formulate my thoughts, but ultimately, Oz, I hope you really do find your happiness in life. I hope you find your peace, your satisfaction, your perfect black cat, all of that. I'm not sure what you want from an outcome in this situation, but I guess I'll have to figure that out later. Blair, I just want you to realize you've caused pain. You've caused me pain. I don't care about the drama. I just want you to realize how much you've hurt me. I've been doing my best to hold everything in, for years now at this point. If you actually did read my thread, you would know what I want. Peace. I just want to be free. I just want to be able to breathe. I have read that you want peace. I thought we were doing better. I wish it could have been something we talked about on our own time instead of dogpiling. I'm left more confused than anything. Well, I assume you don't want to talk anymore. All I ever wanted was for you to realize you hurt me. Not just in the relationship, I do not care about that. You hurt me as a person to my very core. At some point, Blair, you need to see the pattern. Well, Oz, I cared about the relationship too. I cared about all of it. You hurt me as a person too and ripped everything wide open today. And if doing this all to me helps you feel better, then that's okay. I'll take oh, it. I'm sorry, Oz. I hope this helps you find your peace. Except you aren't. You're going- The, the, the like, feigned martyr stuff is laid on so thick. It's got to be one of the most, like, like, it is so, it's so laid on thick. It, through this entire thing, from the very first video we reacted to on this, sub, on this subject, that, like, fake martyrdom, no, it's okay. I'll just take all the pain in the world for you. It's, uh, God, it, it's so cloying and, and disgusting. Like, I don't know, it almost makes you crave a more blatant, like, uh, like a more, uh, to, to just see a more blatant and obvious thing, but it's just, it's just so gross. And it's laid on so thick. And you continue to drag my name through the mud. You're going to continue to be who you are. And that's okay. I just hope that you stop painting people as your weekly villain. It's your biggest flaw and it's always gotten you in the most trouble. It's what caused the most harm. Blair it's above and beyond just playing the victim. Like, it goes one step further than just playing the victim. You know, playing the victim is like, look at all the bad things that happened to me. This one is like, no, it's okay. Even though I'm currently fighting you about you quote unquote canceling me, I'll take the cancellation because I just want to see, I just want to see you thrive. Can't you see while I'm actively planning to sue you? Can't you see that I just, I'll take it. All the evil that you're doing to me, I'll take it for you. It's like, it's, it goes a step beyond playing the victim. You know what I mean? It's so gross. I'm sorry I ripped everything wide open, but I never had the chance to heal. I never had the chance to feel peace. Instead, I went to therapy and have a PTSD diagnosis. Instead, I gave myself chemical burns because I was too scared to say no. I'm afraid of you, Blair. I'm getting a second opinion on the PTSD. I don't want it to be true, and I don't trust Talkspace to that extent. What the hell are you talking about with chemical burns? And this purple portion here is Blair airing her mental health. I'm leaving this censored. I don't want to drag your name in the mud, which is why I'm going to you instead of Twitter or whatever. I would go to an actual doctor. Colorado is tightening down on telemedicine stuff, FYI. I'm working on it. Thanks for the heads up. I would rather talk to you in a phone call, in person, whatever. I would rather try to work on things and work out things over, I don't know, whatever else the other options are. I don't want either of us hurting. I know there is no band-aid solution, but I know talking helps. Just for some context, why I didn't take this is because Blair does have a habit of recording conversations. This is evident with the say, Madison yeah. situation from Cruel to Happy Mind. I was fearful she would take my words out of context to suit her narrative. I need time. I need to see a real therapist first. I don't know what else to say. I'm sorry you're hurting as well. I really am. But I need to start putting my needs first. I will put my needs first too. Good luck out there. Take care, please.
Can't guarantee that, but I will be alive. Just so we're clear, that was a joke. Probably a bad one, but a joke. And I'll have the officer remove the bolo off of your house too. I guess I'll be heading down then. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have it in my name either. Just show them any verifiable threats and they'll do it. And this was the last time I spoke to Blair. For additional context, the bolo in question as Blair described it was essentially swatting protection. It was a way that if someone were to attempt to swat my home, the officer in question would then look up my address and see that I am a public figure and give me a call before showing up to my door in SWAT gear. Blair removed this protection when I spoke out against her, or at least she claims. I don't know if this actually exists or not. But to me, in my eyes, on this day, after I had spoken out against Blair, Blair removed protections that I would have against swatting. Protections which she did in fact put in place, but had also explained to me what the purpose of them were. There is a lot to unpack here. However, these messages are important as I believe they help demonstrate why I have come to the conclusions I have on her motives. It is worth noting, I am the one who asked for space. I am the one who wanted nothing to do with her. She is the one who apologized and desperately sought out a rapid solution to remove my words from the internet. I finally said no. This same day, April 24th, one topic would post his thread in opposition to Blair. April 28th, Blair would upload her video, Illuminati Exposed, which served as a direct response to her detractors. Blair had taken drama off of Twitter with minimal viewership and plastered it before her large audience for the world to see. In this video, she finally showed that she did in fact apologize to Legal Eagle in private. If this was made public, I believe we would not be here right now, as myself and others would not have received questions and pressure from viewers to make a statement. In this video, which is still public, Blair attempted to address the Twitter threads from both Click and Wonder. In doing so, she also used this opportunity to leverage several accusations against them, accusations which she, as it appears based on her actions, had been holding on for nearly three years to use at her convenience for an exact moment like this. It's wild how bad that backfired. And uh, I really wonder, like, I can't help but wonder where, like, where her mental calculation is at right now. Because uh, the allegations, the serious allegations that she made in that video are not going to, are not going to be, uh, uh, they're not going to help her win any sort of case, uh, uh, you know, should, should they, uh, you know, should anything go to court. Now, she might be relying on the fact that most of the, the most heinous allegations that she made were against people, um, who are not in the U.S. and that they might not be interested in, in participating in an, uh, you know, in a, in a, a international, uh, a court case that involves, you know, potentially flying to another country and that kind of stuff. Uh, she might just be hoping that that's the, the, you know, a, a layer that protects her. Um, but, uh, I, I, I can't imagine that, uh, that she's sitting here going, oh yeah, I'm going to win in this particular situation. To me, um, when we last talked about this, um, the thing that we talked about the most is that it seemed like she was uh, like sort of uh, irreversibly on a war path, that it was a self-destructive war path, that she did not seem to have, uh, uh, she seemed to actually care whether she won or not in the end because so much damage had already been done by her own actions in the public eye. Um, and I don't know, at this point, it's just like, so maybe that's the case. Maybe she's still in that frame of mind. Maybe she's still saying, yeah, I don't care as long as I, you know, take someone down with me. Um, but I just, I, I am, it's hard to put yourself into that mental space where you're like, yeah, I, I have, I have not only detonated my own channel through, through persistent engagement that did not need to happen. Um, all of this could have been so easily resolved, uh, just by, saying sorry about the uh sorry about the uh the, the the wrong accusation legal eagle i spoke out of turn that could have been the end of it i mean i guess there's always that you know there would have still been the h bomber guy video but that's a totally different like it's a totally different subject instead 
everything got aired, everything got turned into drama. And I wonder, I really wonder if she thought that she was going to win purely in the court of public opinion and that the, uh, the, the legal threats that came out later was sort of desperate. I wonder if she's got cold feet is what I'm saying. In my opinion, based on what we see from these events, either Blair knew her evidence was a misrepresentation of facts and only worth sharing as a Hail Mary attempt to destroy someone's reputation, or she willingly held evidence of minors being harmed within Click server and only reported on it three years later when it benefited her. I cannot fathom any other reason for the events transpiring the way that they have. In fact, back in 2020, by the way she spoke within her messages, Blair seemed very eager to find an opportunity to destroy Click with this exact evidence. Or to use her words from 2020, nah, I'm not gonna attack Click unless it becomes public gossip or a drama channel picks it up. Then I will nuke him. Oh my, <laughs> oh no! Oh no! This is her, this is evidence of her just straight up admitting that she knew that, that her, it, it was, that it was a, a calculated thing. From the very first video, this is evidence that she didn't actually have any genuine concerns, but rather that she was holding on to it as a way to win an interpersonal battle. And that she has zero concern for anybody who may have been harmed, whether or not there was any actual harm that unfolded uh, in Click Server. That is so bad. Why would you? Oh my in God. In this response video, Blair accused Click of some fairly horrendous things, which he did address in full within his own response video. Now, this is a retelling of well-documented public events which transpired publicly. None of this is new information. Blair also had a chapter dedicated to Wonder where she plastered his mental health for the world to see. Oh Wonder is a former employee of Blair's, meaning... The Wonder section of all of this was probably the saddest section of all. Wonder got done so dirty. That Blair had exposed private and sensitive information, also known as PII, which included conversations she had with his therapist for her entire audience of, at the time, roughly 1.7 million subscribers. Blair also accused Wonder of mistreatment of his dog, as well as other false accusations that Wonder was forced to address. There is, of course, the infamous three-minute section dedicated to me where Blair is in tears. I have my own opinion on these tears, but I plan to tackle this at a different time, as it serves no purpose here beyond pointing out that, in my opinion, Blair is attempting to leverage private details for public pity, which some people did in fact take at phase. What happened to Wonder? Uh, that is a very complicated thing, and I recommend watching my previous section uh, that I did on it. I did a whole video just on the wonder stuff. Uh, the short version is, uh, she aired a ton of his personal struggles. He was very, very young when he started working for Blair. Blair, uh, convinced him to, 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 uh, sign a, a lot of, of different documents and agreements that put him at a fin financial disadvantage. And then when he displeased her, she very quickly uh, used the full strength of, those, of that financial power over him to make his life hell. And when he said anything against her in public, uh, she basically aired a ton of his private information uh, via her video uh, just to try and punish him for ever speaking out. It was very, very, very dirty. Yeah value and demanded I apologize to Blair on various platforms. This section's cumbersome wording is very particular to the legal side of things that will make sense when looking at her, in my opinion, legal hypocrisy. She played in the mud just as much as everyone else did. I cannot emphasize enough that Blair had taken Click and Wonder's Twitter complaints and negative experiences of her past behavior, complaints made publicly as reasoning for their discontinued association with her after her public folly with Legal Eagle, and would then post a response video where she herself 
levied accusations against other content creators, which warranted a response to defend themselves against her claims. I understand that to a vast majority of you, this is obvious. This is Oz Media, not Wonder. But Blair attempts to paint her video as an attempt to de-escalate matters within the original filings of the lawsuit. Ironically, this factual allegation was later mysteriously removed in future amended versions of her legal complaint. 34. Regarding the false accusations listed above, Blair made one public post, attempting to debunk the misinformation. She has not publicly addressed the situation further in an attempt to de-escalate it. While I have my theories on why this was removed, the exact details are unknown. In her current complaint, there is currently no reference to her ever uploading this video or any of the public comments she's made, making it appear as though she never played in the mud, and her criticisms came from nowhere. Here's a quick search in the second amended complaint to demonstrate this. This document will be on full display in future chapters within part two. More wow. on this, of course, when we reach the legal debunking. Sorry to edge you all on like this with this tease, but my point here is that Blair's story has already had numerous revisions, and she sees her video as an attempt at de-escalation. If you recall, among the many other accusations she levies, Blair accused YouTuber The Click of harboring pedophiles in his Discord server. In what world this is a de-escalation? I cannot say. Now, of course, I do believe that Blair is entitled to speak publicly on her personal retelling of events. However, I personally find it to be brash, hypocritical, and even monstrous to then sue those who argue against said retelling of events. Something, something rocks in glass houses. Following Blair's April 20th video, this would of course follow with a twit longer drafted by Wonder, posted April 29th, in a rapid attempt to defend himself from the multitude of new allegations that Blair had dropped on his doorstep. May 2nd, Click would upload his response, detailing his experiences with Sad Milk as well as what he had personally gone through. Near the end of this video, documentation is shown from an individual who was previously anonymous, which helped provide Click with supporting evidence to bolster his claims as well as to dismantle the many accusations thrown forward by Blair. This individual is now being sued by Blair. His online handle is Felix the Kit Kat. He was a former Discord moderator, later turned manager at Pyramid Entertainment LLC. We will be diving into his portion of the lawsuit later in this video, in dismantling the claims Blair has set forth within her lawsuit. It is of my opinion that Felix has been included for retaliatory reasons, as with him being a former employee, Blair had access to his home address and thus the means to serve him with legal papers. Felix is among the individuals who the new GoFundMe will be aiding. May 11th would be the wow. date that Wonder would release his video. An hour and a half. Wow. She really is suing everybody. Wow. That is incredibly, incredibly petty. long rebuke of the claims Blair had laid out against him, some of which include refuting the alleged mistreatment of his dog, James, as well as being forced to out elements of his mental health. Wonder was forced to relive his trauma in front of the world because Blair, in my opinion, either recklessly and carelessly or purposefully and meticulously included them as attempts to attack his character and credibility to lower the needed public standard of evidence so she could pin him as being a mentally unstable ingrate who mistreats his dog. I also made cameo interviews in this video where I spoke on what I witnessed during the time that Wonder was living with Blair and I, giving third party account to some of the personal stories that Blair made public. My words in this video were in response to Blair's public comments. I will add that as of this video's production, Wonder has not been served by the- Thank you, Ashmar. Ashmar says, just to be clear, she's she's suing the guy who tipped the click off about her alt account, which is, I would, I would love to see what the lawsuit for that actually is. Like, I, it, to me, that just sounds like you're trying to intimidate someone with a lawsuit. To me, that's what that sounds like courts and is currently on the table for dismissal. If he does get served, the GoFundMe will be at his disposal for legal fees as well. This then leads to Blair's infamous posts made to her YouTube community tab and Twitter on May 26th, speaking on how she intends to clear the false allegations that have surfaced against her. Let's actually take a peek at this real quick. Hey everyone, I'm fully aware of the recent false allegations that have surfaced. I want to take a moment to publicly state that I am taking these allegations seriously and I'm committed to rectifying this situation. 
do you remember when we went do you remember when we went through the comments of this post on my stream what a what a memory looking at her own community responding it was not good also uh, people were getting their comments removed like crazy on this post. Actually wild. Hypno Amber says, uh, Demon Mama, apparently the lawsuit against Felix is for breach of an NDA. Mad Catster also goes over that. All right, maybe we'll watch the Mad Catster video afterwards. We'll, we'll take a look at that maybe. We'll see how time is going. So far, we've been making good time. Let's continue. ...promptly and appropriately. I understand the concerns and potential impact that these false allegations have caused. My team and I are actively working behind the Thank scenes to gather so all relevant facts. I am committed to transparency and accountability throughout this process. Rest assured that I am taking decisive action to address this situation. I will provide updates and communicate any necessary actions as soon as possible. Thank you to those of you who are standing by me during this challenging time. I will not allow these false allegations to be weaponized as a way to silence my voice. I appreciate your patience and understanding during this challenging time. I am dedicated to upholding my channel's values and delivering on our commitments. I am confident that the truth will prevail. Sincerely, Blair Zahn. I would like to note that Blair has been publicly silent on her platform for an entire year on this matter. Blair claimed that false allegations were being weaponized to silence her voice, but she has, in my opinion, been weaponizing the legal system to silence further criticism of her actions. I too, Blair am confident the truth will prevail, which is why I'm actually breaking my silence, because I'm exhausted with playing the game your way. This would follow with the very next day, Blair sending out cease and desist to first Wonder, and then later myself, roughly one week later, June 5th. At this point, and up until September of 2023, I would have only made a single Twitter thread, as well as possibly five minutes of cameo time in Wonder's video discussing matters, which Blair had previously made public. Between the two cease and desists, we would see one topic release a video discussing his experiences with Sad Milk on June 2nd. His video was made for his audience and acted as more of an open form of communication with those who had questions. It wasn't chock full of screenshots and he really had nothing to prove. We would then see the release of Swoop's video June 6th, which I was barely even mentioned in. This will be important for the second part. In the following week, specifically June 14th, 2023 at 9.03 a.m., which I would also like- Um, what I've seen of Swoop, I've really enjoyed. I think, I think Swoop might be one of the only channels I've seen that cover, that's covered this drama that I feel like really like did their due diligence. I, I, uh, I quite liked Swoop's previous videos on this, yeah. to add that these were denied by the court, which is why I had never heard of them until very recently. Two civil protection orders against myself as well as Wonder were filed by Blair. Blair cites general harassment that she had received as grounds for her civil protection against Wonder. Now, I would like to firmly state that if you've ever sent a threat of any kind to Blair, go fuck yourself. I don't want you in my audience or even remotely associated with me. You're selfish and only stroking your own ego while simultaneously hurting everyone involved. But with that being said, I do want to briefly talk about a few details in the CPO ordered against me, which, again, was denied, where Blair accuses me of beating her dog, Casper. I deeply cared for him, and I find this accusation thrown into a CPO for sympathy from the judge to be revolting. I also, in my personal opinion, believe that this is further evidence of Blair twisting and manipulating facts, or in some cases, just outright lying. How fucking dare you accuse me of beating Casper after everything I did for you and him, which, in your own video, Blair, you said it yourself, how much help I provided with Casper. There is more squabble listed within these denials. This is, again, this is the type of behavior that makes me think that Blair is, is, is on a completely self-destructive warpath. That this is a, uh, there's no real intention to actually win. That the win condition is doing as much financial harm as possible out of a sense of revenge. That is, that is what it comes off as to me. Because we all remember... In her video, when she, with her own voice, put on the internet for everyone to see, 
that she believed that uh, that Oz was always good to her and Casper the dog. To then make, to then put in a legal document an allegation that may not be provable. That is a that has already been entered into the legal record. She's made a claim of a crime being committed against an animal. That is, that is, that is the type of action that can backfire so badly. And, and it seems like it will. I mean, unless, unless she can produce proof of that behavior, which my personal inclination, giving ev given everything else in this situation, is to highly doubt that she has evidence of that behavior. wild i'd cpos that are just not worth entertaining at this moment but if you do have more questions on these i would like to kenneth allen cook says you say she's on a self-destructive warpath but what she's doing seems to be hurting everyone but her why do her actions come off as that to you um no she is hurting tons of people but she's absolutely hurt herself her channel her her the center of her of her business and her online presence has been completely and utterly destroyed. And there is no way that's coming back. Her reputation is gone. It was, she was eating absolute shit before the H-bomb video even dropped on her. She was getting destroyed by, by burning her credibility with her own audience before H-bomber guy's video even hit. Now it's over. Her channel's gone. And these things happened as a result of her actions. And on top of that, the claims that she's made and the boldness with which she is putting forward claims while also pursuing legal action uh, uh, aggressively. Other people aren't pursuing to sue her. She's suing them. And if you make, if you go out of your way to sue somebody and you, and you're suing them for things um, while also having done hugely risky activities on yourself, that can backfire. And if you lose the case, you will eat dirt. You like, there is so much ground for a uh, fair legal response. If the claims that she's put forward are false. And so far we've already seen that some of the claims that she has put forward are false. The claims that she made against click some of the claims that she made against Wonder were proven as false. That's why I say it's a self-destructive warpath. She's trying to take other people down with her, but she's doing incredible, unbelievable, irreparable damage to herself in the process. It's a, it is a, I will take you down with me type behavior. Yeah, here, we can just look at the, at the graphs for her chart, the social blade graphs for her, for her channel, I mean. Total subscribers weekly. Oh my god. Month look at look at this right here. May 2023. This is where the drop this is right around where the drama began. Cratered and it has and for over a year it has never even come back. It is only getting worse. She went from 9.7 million video views in April to Last month, she got 162,000. So from May 2023 to May, here, let's do April, from April to April. From April of 2023, 9.7 million to eight, one year later, 184,000 1, views. D decimated. And look at this. Here's her subscriber chart, okay? Back in May, in April, early May, or March, I should say, is when it started. March of 2023, the decline has begun. And there has not been a single month in which she has gained subscribers since. Her best month is a month in which she lost no subscribers. This is completely destro destroyed. Her channel is destroyed not to mention that's not even to mention the patreon where her income comes from 
It's bad. Yeah, lose your lose all subscriber speedrun for sure. Yep. Wild. To refer you to Vangelina Skov, as she was able to cover these in full before their removal by the original leaker. Moving on from my personal emotions, the terms of both said CPOs are this. Petitioner requests that this court order to delete- Oh yeah, true, not to mention the loss of her subscribers. The amount of damage that she's done to herself is incredible. And by comparison, on a financial level, the amount of damage that she's done to others is actually less than what she's done to herself. However, of course, the damage that she's done to others includes, you know, uh, in my opinion, extensive emotional damage. Let's continue. All posts X has made to social media since April 23rd, 2023, pertaining to Sad Milk, Petitioner, or her social media platforms, refrain from posting about Petitioner or her social media content on any of his social media accounts or on the social media accounts of others, refrain from posting in the comments section of any of Petitioner's social media accounts, refrain from interacting in any way with Petitioner's social media posts, refrain from encouraging any third party to post in the comments section of Petitioner's social media accounts, or posting any of petitioners okay, original content for any purpose refrain from making any videos or media posts about petitioner this in my opinion was an attempt at a gag order to prevent all future posting on blair specifically in my opinion to lay the groundwork for her to begin her lawsuit unopposed with no worry of public retaliation as well as to prevent any and all future responses from being posted it is my opinion that Blair had the motives to silence the critics so she could begin her attempt at rewriting the public narrative. The one we will see shortly within the lawsuit. The timeline becomes quiet. Yeah, maybe she could try maybe she could try selling cutco knives, huh? Or like Herbalife or whatever. Till July 26th, 2023, where we would see two new videos posted about Blair, with their own original stories to tell. One from Crew World Happy Mind, as well as Savannah Marie. Crew World Happy Mind would detail her alleged experiences with Blair and how, according to Crew World Happy Mind, while pregnant, she fell subject to a harassment campaign from Blair and how Blair, in her eyes, actively weaponized a potential loss of pregnancy from how sick the stress made her to silence Madison from Crew World Happy Mind. Savannah Marie levies accusations of plagiarism, the second person to make this accusation against Blair. Now, this is where my September video partially begins to come into play. Unfortunately, due to the slow crawl of legal processors, I would only be aware of half of Blair's actions at this time. On August 22nd, 2023, Blair began the official proceedings to put my home into foreclosure. If you are unaware of the details on this, please see my September upload titled, Let's Talk Illuminati Drama Update. In this video, I explain the details of how I even ended up in this position. This foreclosure process was based upon a debt that I had accrued with her, while we were dating, I had no warning, no notice of behind payments, no communication that this would be happening. Instead, I found out from a realtor who excitedly told me my condition of foreclosure and asked to purchase my home from me. What a way to wake up. To further clarify, as I stated in my September video, I was indeed behind on payments. It is my opinion that Blair introduced a payment structure that she knew I would be destined to fall behind on. I, originally, wasn't concerned as before I foolishly signed those deeds of trust, Blair assured me that the only way she would get her payments was if I paid or if the home was sold. I never took the time to realize that she meant she could sell my home through foreclosure. If I knew it granted her this power, I would have never signed those documents. Again, if this is all new information, please go see my September update video. August 29th, 2023, Blair would submit a new set of temporary restraining orders, which were denied, as well as her lawsuit against Felix, Wonder, and myself, for defamation and breach of contract. It is of my opinion that Blair timed these events so I could only fight one, the foreclosure or the lawsuit, not both. I do believe that if I did not speak out against her in April, she would not have put my home through foreclosure proceedings. With these actions... Page Punk Corpse asks, does Oz use he, him, or they, them pronouns? Uh, both. According to, according to their Twitter.
Clinton's timed alongside the lawsuit, it does make me firmly believe, in my opinion, its retaliatory in nature. The restraining orders in question were to once more prevent publication of any information on Blair. In this restraining order, Blair directly cites the video I was originally producing as a documentary on her actions as grounds to allow this pseudo gag order to proceed. Quoting this TRO, here, however, plaintiff's request for relief will cause defendants no harm because they simply must refrain from publishing what is essentially an online op-ed piece, which they have admitted will lambast plaintiffs. Should the court deem plaintiff's claims to be unnecessary, defendants can simply publish their video. Scared of something? Truth being, before we get into more details, Blair could have easily just responded, but the silence and sudden bombardment of legal speaks volumes, Blair. Because please remember, at this point of her filings, I'd only made a public Twitter thread and approximately five minutes worth of cameo time in an interview in Wonder's video. I would not be made aware of the lawsuit or legal filings until September 27th, more than a week after my September video was published. I had elected, out of respect for the legal system, to remain silent until now. It's not that I'm lacking respect for it with the publication of this video, I'm lacking respect for Blair and the escapades she's elected to throw me into. The legal proceedings have been grueling, from a mix of anxiety-laden sleepless nights to curveballs that throw off my entire day. It can be very difficult to live a normal life when every day is filled with stress and anxiety, every email notification laced with dread. It's, it's exhausting, and this video exists because I'm tired. The lawsuit starts with the service in late September, roughly a week or so after my September upload, specifically September 27th. I would be in and out of calls with my lawyer, going over the facts of the matter, looking over everything I could and providing as much evidence as possible. Unfortunately, I can't just drop a folder of evidence in the judge's desk with a solid nuh -uh and walk away. It's a shame, really. The inner workings for how the legal proceedings have gone so far are mostly publicly documented by the creators previously mentioned. If the time comes, I will explore the full timeline of the lawsuit, including Blair's attempts at settling this lawsuit grotesquely in her favor for all parties involved. But for now, I'm leaving these be. Once you make it to the outro, my reasoning will make sense. During the proceedings of this lawsuit, H Bomber Guy would upload not one, but two videos covering Blair's prior acts of plagiarism. One being a 40 minute section within a four hour long, 20 million view video, as well as an individually uploaded 20 minute video with over 3 million views focusing exclusively on Blair. More people are aware of Blair because of H Bomber Guy than they are for any of the other drama related reasons surrounding her. This timeline will be extremely important for the following chapters. Again, I implore all of you to double check as I was only focusing on videos related to the lawsuit in question as well as all and any first party sources. This now leads us to Felix. So Felix is the former mod who we learned about in this episode who uh, allegedly Blair is suing as well former discord mod who uh per perhaps whistle blew on some behavior through the last nine months felix and i have been wading through the murky waters of a lawsuit blair has set forth if the one who leaked the alt account stuff yeah the the whistleblower on the alt account information which if we if we want to remember i mean i'm sure we're going to get into it so let's let him talk and then we'll i'll i'll, I'll fill in information if necessary if you're unfamiliar with the nitty gritty of the legal proceedings at play and still don't recognize who Felix the Kit Kat is, again, this is a former Discord moderator for Blair turned employee at Pyramid Entertainment, the leading plaintiff, in this lawsuit Blair has hoisted us into. As of the time of writing, Felix's motion to dismiss was denied and he will be proceeding through standard legal proceedings with Blair. I will be going into the specifics of the judge's order shortly, and to firmly clarify, the judge is not connected to or well-educated on the YouTube space, nor the drama which has transpired. He is doing his job and acting according to the documents provided in front of him. More on this soon, as the legal system is far more complicated than an episode of Law and Order may lead you to believe. As a reminder, the lawsuit isn't even out of the starting gate. This could turn into an exhausting fight ahead of all of us, and is far from over for those of us who are directly involved. It'll be my purpose here to present Blair's claims against Felix, the 
counter towards them and why I feel these claims were created in bad faith, as well as going over why the judge made his ruling the way he did, as in my opinion it helps to shine light into Blair's legal strategy at hand. Referring back to the timeline provided earlier, on May 2nd, 2023, YouTuber The Click, a comedy and meme channel, this will be an important distinction for later, produced his response to the April 20th video, Illuminati Exposed, where Blair had levied multiple allegations of misconduct against Click. Click responded to these accusations with a 30 minute response to an eight minute chapter within Blair's video thoroughly, in my opinion, clearing his name. I would also like to give the information specifically in this case to Blair and her lawyers that I did not reach out to Felix nor had contact with Felix since his departure from Pyramid Entertainment LLC until April 24th, where Felix would initially reach out to me as seen here. He would later reach out once again shortly after Blair's public video, where he felt that Blair had improperly retold events as Felix was a direct witness to what had transpired with Click. Felix, of his own volition, wanted to help set the record straight on information unrelated to the operations of Pyramid Entertainment LLC. Within Click's video, the final chapter includes screenshots from a redacted individual. This individual in question was Felix the Kit Kat. In these screenshots, Felix provides documentation of Blair offering him $200 to sift through prior Sad Milk recordings to find evidence of Click using the R word. These screenshots in question are what Blair is suing for defamation, as well as breach of contract. What is not included within this lawsuit, however, is the screenshot evidence provided by Felix of Blair owning the alt account that was created to harass Click as well as his cohorts in 2020. Take this information as you will. Blair is willing to sue over a DM showing her paying one of her, at the time, Discord moderators $200 to dig up dirt on a prior collaborator, but Blair is not suing about the disclosure of information about owning an alt account to harass other YouTubers. Take that as you will. The claims against Felix the Kit Kat listed within the lawsuit are as follows. If you want the drama attached to the individual filings, you can visit Madcaster's channel where he's broken down each filing for the layman, as well as Vangelina Skov and more recently Tamimi. Up first, as claims against Felix, whose full name will be censored using orange. Defendant Felix is a former employee of plaintiffs. As a note, his employment began at or around the time of May 5th, 2021. As disclosed in the factual allegation number 18, Blair states, Defendant Felix signed a confidentiality agreement on May 5th, 2021, signed the Felix Agreement, which all employees are required to sign as a condition of employment, 63. Felix is in violation of this Felix Agreement by turning over private messages between himself and Blair to another YouTuber, Mark Dreck, to exploit in a YouTube video made to slander plaintiffs. This video is available at, then YouTube link, and is titled Illuminati and Sad Milk. The video was not produced as Blair stated to slander plaintiffs. This video made by Click was in self-defense from Blair. Felix came to the aid of someone defending themselves. What Blair has done in this loss. People are asking, why do so many people like this keep receipts and the answer is a it's it's a combination of a sense of invulnerability, an arrogant sense of vulnerability, invulnerability, and also the fact that they make a lot of people sign NDAs. Now, how strong those NDAs are and the legal the legal viability of them is is uh, heavily uh, under question, as I'm sure we'll probably find out as this proceeds. Um, but yeah. It turns out that, you know, uh, a lot of people who are up to no good really like to aggressively utilize NDAs so that if you say anything about it at any point and you're not 100% uh, legally locked tight, they can get you. It's completely removed any and all instances or references of her public statements to make it appear as though any attack against her is slanderous. Please recall the previous removal of factual allegation 34 from the prior version of the lawsuit. Again, 34. Regarding the false accusations listed above, Blair made one public post, attempting to debunk the misinformation. She has not publicly addressed this situation further in an attempt to de-escalate it. Uh -huh. Once more, mention of this no longer exists within the lawsuit. The screenshot in question happened November 10th, 2020 nearly seven months before Felix's employment under Pyramid Entertainment. The NDA should not cover private messages unrelated to Pyramid LLC. It appears to me that Blair is attempting to claim that every conversation she has ever had with an employee throughout all of time, even matters unrelated <laughs> to Pyramid Entertainment, 
are under NDA. These DMs were in specific relation to a group collaboration channel known as Sad Milk, which included the likes of Damian Lee, Flinders, Hi I'm Wonder, One Topic, The Click, Salty, and myself, and of course Blair. Sad Milk is operated as a different corporate entity, with its own distinct EIN, known as Wet Socks LLC, which is a sibling company to Pyramid Entertainment. Both are owned by the same umbrella company that holds my debt. If any argument were to be made about this being work contributed by Felix, the actions taken were not in service to Pyramid Entertainment, but instead Wet Socks LLC. However, there was no employment contract or NDA attached to these actions in service to Wet Socks. The files in question are related to old audio recordings of Sad Milk videos not Pyramid. It is also important to point out that these actions in question were not, to my knowledge, normal company practice to specifically target employees who were low on money to dig up dirt on prior collaborators of Blair's. Then to pay said employee with a PayPal transaction. To further add, Click was contracted talent for Wet Socks LLC, as Blair herself demonstrated at 11.14 in her own video, where she briefly shows on screen the Sad Milk Entertainment contract, which she refers to as the agreement. I would also like to add that if this was official company business, there should be a documented 1099 form or other specific documentation to show the payments to Felix are properly documented for specifically Pyramid Entertainment. After talking with Felix and being shown his TurboTax filing from 2020, I can confidently state neither this 1099 nor any form of company documentation exists to specify this payment as being directly in service of Pyramid Entertainment. As of this time, we only have a PayPal transfer listed as video review. Mind you, there are no PayPal transfer fees attached to this amount. PayPal takes a fee for business-related transactions. This can range widely, but the common fee for a company transfer is 3.49% with an additional 49 cents per transaction. This means that this transaction is most likely listed internally with PayPal as a friends and family transfer. As before July 28th, 2022, it was possible for a business PayPal account to send money via a friends and family transfer. This transfer was made in November of 2020, nearly two years before this policy change occurred. To me, in my opinion, based on the evidence I have in front of me, this appears to be an under the table task assigned to him with no documentation of how that money was categorized, with the payment being labeled within PayPal as friends and family, similar to paying your neighbor's kid to mow the lawn. And on top of that, the assignment was specific. Ooh boy. This, this is the type of stuff, the sloppiness that I'm talking about that is like going to be very inconvenient for someone like Blair if they try to actually follow up on legal threats. Wow. It's like, this is the type of stuff that is, that is like nobody's problem if people aren't threatening to sue one another and instantly becomes a giant problem the moment that it becomes like a giant legal conflict. So like, <laughs> she really hurt herself. She, is, she wasn't getting sued by anybody. People were saying their opinions about her online because they didn't want anybody else to get to like get wrapped up in a nightmare situation with her and she decided to take it to the to to the the courts and now it it and now we're there's all kinds of messes her her paperwork is a mess this is this is the this is the thing if she continues from here it really is just i'm trying to take you down with me i hope you have to spend a hundred thousand plus dollars trying to defend yourself from a, a bullshit lawsuit in court. It, it, it would be amazing to see if she continues from this point on. Specifically in service to Wet Socks, not Pyramid Entertainment LLC, and specifically involve prior contractors, click, of Wet Socks LLC not Pyramid Entertainment. In my eyes, I see this as Blair retroactively changing the events of 2020 to fit her narrative within the lawsuit. The simple truth is, this conversation was held November of 2020, and he was hired May of 2021. Blair is trying to claim that these were company communications and has framed it as such to make the lawsuit stick. 
Factual Claim 64. Regarding these messages, Defendant Felix edited selectively picked messages to create the appearance that Blair made statements that she did not. He thereby created a false narrative that was damaging to the plaintiffs. Felix, when the lawsuit was served to him, more on why that's on air quotes later, posted on Twitter informing the public of his circumstance, while also providing the full context of the screenshot in question, which provides no room to argue for cherry picking, as Blair has argued in her suit. Blair does later in this suit confirm the validity of these screenshots by stating she cross-referenced them in her own DMs. But in my opinion, the full context here makes her look worse. These messages were provided to help clear a former collaborator's name of accusations brought against him by Blair. Here's the full context for those DMs. Alright, let's take a look at these. Hey, are you still short on rent? Rent? No. Electric and phone? Yes. I'm at negative two dollars right now. No idea what I'm doing for lunch tomorrow, but I'm at the A fuck it I'll figure out phase of my life. I have something for you, but it's a little tedious. I mean, my my life is nothing but tedium, so I can prob I can do it. Illuminati, I need you to work with blank and help me to find click saying the R slur in Sad Milk's raw audio. Felix the Kid Cat says, I can do that. Let me get a shower and I'll be down. She claims he said it in a sad milk video, but can't remember which one. And she's over her head with shit. I'll pay you $200 to find it. Yeah, just hand me the files and I can get started. $200 will help quite a bit. There's that file and a file in the file. Mods most will have Discord calls, and I think it's happened within the first 10 minutes. I'll check the whole recording to be sure. So I'm looking at all four folders. Just go into the published file. Everything about this does not imply, like, you're doing this work as a part of your contract for Sad Milk, except for the fact that it's a Sad Milk video. This is, this is, this is the type of stuff that's going to come back to bite her if she continues to pursue this in court. For real, Hypno Amber? Is that for real? Where do we do we have evidence of that? Is that in one of the other videos? Blair sending a message at 11 10 2020, 8 57 p.m. Hey, are you still short on rent? Rent, no electric and foam. Yes, I am at negative two dollars right now. No idea what I'm gonna do for lunch tomorrow, but I'm at the eh, fuck it. I'll figure it out phase of my life. Blair, I have something for you, but it's a little tedious. I mean, my life okay. is nothing but tedium, so I can do it. I need you to work with Blank to help me find Click saying the R slur in Sad Milk's raw audio. I can do that. Let me get a shower and I'll be down. She claims he said it in a Sad Milk video, but I can't remember which one. And she's over her head with shit. I'll pay you $200 to find it. Yep, just hand me the files and I can get started. $200 will help quite a bit. The portion redacted here is a link to a Google Drive. There's that file and a file in the file. Most will have Discord calls, and I think it happened within the first 10 minutes. I'll check the whole recording to be sure, so I'm looking at all four folders. Just go into the published file. The very next day, Felix would receive payment from Blair for, quote, video review, end quote. As a reminder, within Click's video, this was the screenshot originally shown. Now, the next few sections are nearly 50 points down the line and highly segregated as we enter into her claims of relief. The other skip points involve myself as well as Wonder, who was never formally served in this lawsuit. Starting with the seventh claim of relief, defamation per quad, as to defendant Felix. 108. Blair and Pyramid hereby incorporate the previous paragraphs by reference as though each were fully set forth therein. 109. On or about May 2nd, 2023. I can't help but wonder if after this video came out blair got a call from her lawyer and was like why didn't you tell me that the guy that you're trying to sue was not working for the company that we're talking about in this lawsuit i have a feeling that this video may have prompted a very very frustrated call from blair's lawyer Defendant Felix published a public Twitter X post from one of his Twitter X accounts, at Felix the Kit Kat. Now, I believe this is a clerical error, as Felix did not tweet on any of the days surrounding May 2nd. 
I believe Blair is referring to this tweet in question, made November 23rd of 2023. 110. This statement implies that Blair committed the tort of abuse of process, alleging a. an ulterior motive for the use of a judicial proceeding to retaliate for defendant Felix's post-employment actions, b. the willful use of legal proceedings in an improper matter, trying to force a default judgment without properly serving defendant Felix, c. damages, an impending default judgment against defendant Felix. 111. These statements are false, and Defendant Felix made the statement with negligent disregard for its falsity. Process server, redacted, signed a declaration that she served Defendant Felix on September 26, 2023, at his place of abode, handing the required legal documents to an individual matching Defendant Felix's physical description. Felix was never directly handed papers. Instead, the papers were delivered by mail to an address he lives two hours away from, at a claim time while he was just getting off of work, two hours away from the stated address. The papers were never formally handed to Felix. Uh -oh. Felix's sister found an envelope in the mail with regular U.S. postage labeled to Felix on or around October 6th. Uh-oh. This directly opposes the processor's claim of directly handing it to Felix. What I find interesting is that this appeared in a mailbox with postage and was within a standard mailing period from September 26th. Yet... The if all of these claims are true, this is going to be eminently verifiable and it is going to immediately put her into big trouble. This is just like, that is like the biggest goof up that you can possibly imagine. Because if it, if it is true, if these claims are true, then that means that the, 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 there's going to be a giant paper trail for those documents being sent and where they were sent, at the exact times when they were picked up and scanned by the USPS. Wow. There are claims of this being handed directly to Felix. These papers would have been delivered to Felix's stepfather's home within the official legal filing September 27th, 2023 at 6.40 p.m. This address is not his usual place of abode, which is even distinguished, despite the redactions I've made, by not being the address given for Felix in the very lawsuit Blair filed. At the time of delivery, Felix would need to Ooh. drive nearly 150 miles an hour directly after his shift at work to be at said address in time to receive the papers from said processor. While it's not much, Felix has provided me with screenshots of him speaking with his girlfriend about arriving home at 7 p.m. after work. To reiterate, Felix was never formally given papers, despite what the processor claims. Instead, they were mailed to his stepfather, and a proof of service filing was made. The Did she cheap out on a lawyer? Because this is so sloppy. I mean, remember, a lawsuit is not just on your lawyer. Like, a lot of it is, but a lawyer can't fix your own bad behaviors if you're making things, if you're misrepresenting things to the lawyer or if, you're, uh, or if your actions don't line up. I will say this one might be on the lawyer because the lawyer did draft the, uh, the, 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 the lawsuit paperwork that, that would have said that like uh, when the serving of the papers happened and they didn't seem to do their due diligence. So this one might be, but the other one, that sounds like Blair wasn't being forthright with her own lawyer, which is a huge problem. The argument of us theorizing that Blair was trying to get a default judgment against Felix comes from the fact that after the service attempt, nearly every day afterwards, Felix would check in with the Colorado courts for an official proof of service to be filed so he could begin his legal battle. However, Proof of service was not filed until after the time required for Felix to respond. When papers are served, a response is due within 21 days, but 35 days for out-of-state parties, within Colorado, after service. So this would have been either October 31st or November 1st, depending on if the day of service counts towards the allotted time. Proof of service was not filed with the courts until November 17th, more than two weeks after, meaning that Felix would have defaulted. Even my lawyer was caught off guard by these actions. Plaintiff's attorneys filed a proof of service on Felix today. The service was back in September, 
Not sure why they're just filing the proof today. Felix's answer should have been filed by the end of October based on the service date. Allegation 112. Defendant Felix's statement caused special damages as evident by the fact that plaintiff's revenue from videos dropped by more than 95% after defendant's tweet slash X was published from $74,646 in the period of November 23rd. Whoa! Hold on, let me just make sure I heard this all correctly. The fact that plaintiff's revenue from video the answer should have Felix's statement caused end of October based on the service date. Allegation 112. Defendant Felix's statement caused special damages as evident by the fact that plaintiff's revenue from videos dropped by more than 95% after defendant's tweet. Ninety-five percent YouTube revenue loss from making seven seventy-four thousand dollars in a month. She was making seventy-four thousand dollars in a month in November twenty twenty-two, and is down to making two thousand seven hundred and fifty-one. Just, just, a th just a quick throwback to earlier in this conversation when I said that if anybody of you, anyone out there can imagine that type of money, I invite you to please become a sponsor of this show because I cannot imagine that type of money. That is unbelievable. Which means provided her her income from YouTube was consistent she would have been making somewhere in the ballpark of a million dollars a year before she decided to do this war path and now she's making two thousand seven hundred and fifty one dollars a month so you know uh what like like thir less than th around 30k a year from nearly a million per year to 30k a year my god tweet slash x was published from seventy four thousand six hundred and forty six dollars in the period of november 23rd 2022 december 23rd danny fallen says that's seven figures a year from just youtube not necessarily including Patreon and other merch and landlording. True, that's a good point. My God. On a bunch of bullshitted, plagiarized, allegedly plagiarized. It should be clear by my words as I am simply a commentator. Sharing my opinions. 2022 to $2,751.72 during that same period a year later. Blair is listing a drop of revenue from a specific date period and ignoring the fact that her revenue had begun to decline far before that. The official joke. date, April 20th, 2023, is when we can see the first damage be <laughs> Kiwi TV says, I can't believe all YouTubers make 775 k a month. <laughs> yeah! I can't believe all YouTubers make $75,000 a month! <laughs> ...being done to her subscriber count. This is also the day she levied accusations against Legal Eagle. And then, of course, following her upload of the Illuminati Exposed video, the viewership damage is fairly evident, especially in the following weeks where she saw a rapid decline. I find it to be personally dishonest to claim that Felix's GoFundMe tweet was responsible for the drop in revenue reported, as there had been a long-standing consistent drop of revenue for each month prior. Not to mention, of course, in that date range, this includes the H Bomber Guy videos, which had a collective 23 million views between the two of them. 113. Blair suffered non-economic and special damages, as explained in paragraph 112 of the complaint, as a result of defendant Felix's publications in an amount to be proven at trial. I can only assume this is her talking about the general backlash and emotional turmoil this situation has thrown her into. Again, as I'm sure I'll be saying this thousands of times, if you send threats of any kind towards Blair, you're worse than her.
Again, the damages Blair is suffering is of her own doing. The only reason any of us are in this position is because of the actions Blair initially took on April 20th, 2023. Eighth claim for relief, defamation per quad as to defendant Felix. 114, Blair and Pyramid hereby incorporate the previous paragraphs by reference as though they were fully set forth therein. 115, on or about May 2nd, 2023, Mark Deck posted to his public YouTube account, The Click, a video titled Illuminati and Sad Milk, which contains screenshots from Defendant Oz and Felix, intended for publication by Deck, available at YouTube link and timestamp. I also just want to add that Click's name is public. 116. The Illuminati and Sad Milk video displayed a redacted screenshot of a Discord conversation. 117. Upon information and belief, the relevant redacted portions obscured the username Felix the KitKat, the username of Defendant Felix. 118. Upon information and belief, Click is Mark Dreck. It's actually Mark Deck, and he's pretty public with this. It's the name of his public music channel, after all. 119. Blair asked Felix to find Mark Dreck, saying the Arsler in Sad Milk's raw audio. 120. Defendant Felix then asserts that Blair. Okay, all right. Okay, hold on a second. I'm I'm beginning to be sold on the sloppy lawyer. Uh, 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 the sloppy lawyer possibility here. That's a pretty big mess up. I mean, it is still a name, it is just like a, a name typo, but having the name misspelled that many times when it's kind of central to your lawsuit seems like a pretty big oversight. She publicly disapproves of the arsler, uses it in private. 121. This statement carries a defamatory meaning because it implies that Blair is both a hypocrite and a bigot. Her words, not mine. 122. Defendant Felix published this statement with negligent disregard for its truthfulness because he concedes that he has no proof to substantiate his claim. In 2020, Blair had revealed to me that she had used a service to scrub her Twitter of all and any inappropriate or cancelable language that she may have tweeted. Evidence of this can actually be found by the fact that there's a massive removal of tweets on a single day shown by her social blade. I, I had to purchase a social blade premium subscription to get this data down to the day as shown. However, as I've come to learn, that service that Blair used to mass delete tweets doesn't scan media or screenshots. Blair famously went after Click for using the R word 14 years ago. Blair. Blair at one point has stated that the word has never been in her vocabulary and that even with 10 years of time, it's inexcusable that he would use this word despite this being his second language and being the early 2010s and America's cultural exports use this word frequently. Family Guy, South Park, Black Eyed Peas. Blair can be seen in this tweet using the exact word in question that she condemns and damns others for using. Only three years prior to her stating, that word was never in my vocabulary. According to Blair, even 10 years. Now, I don't know that this particular portion has anything to do with the rest of the, um, of the lawsuit, but it certainly is interesting to see, isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, I feel like it should have occurred to her to double check her social media posting history before she started doing the lawsuit if she was going to try and cover things up in the first place. Oh, no. This is inexcusable. Link to the tweet below at the bottom of the description. One of the reasons Blair is suing Felix is for defamation because of a DM where he claimed that Blair has used the R word in private. Well, here she is using it in public as an insult. Now, personally, I'd like to keep the R-word discourse out of it. The main focus here is the hypocrisy at play because it's plain as day. I actually think that Blair's lawyer put it best. Because implies that Blair is both a hypocrite and a bigot.
123. Defendant Felix's statements caused special damages, as evident by the fact that plaintiff's revenue from videos dropped by about 50% after Defendant Felix's defamatory statements were published in the Illuminati and Sadmuk video from $37,981 in the period of May 2nd to June 1st, 2022, to $19,274.85 during that same period a year later. 124. Blair suffered non-economic and special damages, as explained in paragraph 123 of the complaint, as a result of Defendant Felix's publications in an amount to be proved at trial. The economic damages in question, again, are not solely caused by Felix providing those screenshots. Blair is seemingly electing to avoid mentioning that at this time. There are far more factors at play. Thankfully, the timeline provided earlier helps cleanly spell this out for any parties watching who are unfamiliar. The only way that I can read Blair's current filings, in my view, is that Blair appears to be purposefully misleading the judge to try and paint the situation of her being unjustly attacked for no reason, and excluding any mention that she was, in fact, the initial aggressor. This brings me to the present where we are now. After Felix submitting a motion to dismiss, which argues that the lawsuit should be essentially tossed, the judge ruled in Blair's favor for the lawsuit to continue. Mad Catster has some great videos diving into this and going over each party's arguments. I don't think we have the time to sit down and go through the nearly 20 plus pages of documents arguing case law in relation to this suit just for Felix. I will point out though, from what I could see, Felix's lawyer took the route of trying to argue the claims itself and the legal standing, as I'm unsure if at this phase of the suit, if facts can be presented in argumentation of a case's legitimacy, as both defendant parties, mine included, have forgone including the nitty gritty facts of the matter and instead focused on tackling the claims on their merit. That's a really good point, Ka 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 Kalen Cypher. Kalen Cypher, I, I hope that they have to play uh, the the clip of her telling the poop story uh in court that would be just that would just be very funny to stand on their own and utilizing case law on the matter to challenge the arguments at play however it seems that blair was able to eke out a temporary victory with her presentation uh, the, the poop story everyone's asking what the poop story was it's just an old clip from when she used to do uh but when she used to do like Reddit react content, you know, um, and she tells some story about, about clogging a toilet and it's like a disgusting shock, shock humor, you know, shock jockey type story, but it's just like out there in the world for anyone to see and hear. And I just think it's really funny and it should, pro I, I just, I just, I just personally hope that it makes it into the court documents of the claims first and foremost the I, I think it is i think it is a personal story i think she's telling it in response to like a reddit the, the reddit thing but i don't remember oh this was before the reddit era maybe it wasn't i'm misremembering it's literally irrelevant here judge is following procedure as his duties describe according to colorado law which outlines that plaintiffs be given in my opinion for this specific case in question, an unreasonable amount of benefit of the doubt. Even if Blair has a fraction of a percent of a chance for her claims to prevail, the courts must hear them out beyond a motion to dismiss. This is my understanding of the law that the judge has put as his reasoning, which, while frustrating, I understand. This is not the judge blatantly siding with Blair. Your Honor and the jury, I bring your attention to Exhibit C, The Poop Story. This is him doing his job. As quoting, dismissing a complaint only if it appeared beyond a doubt that the plaintiff could prove no set of facts that would entitle him or her to relief, the trial court still accepts all allegations in the complaint as true and views them in the light most favorable to the plaintiff. However, facts pleaded as legal conclusions, i.e. boilerplate or conclusory allegations, such as those that merely repeat the statutory language, are no longer entitled to the presumption that they are true. They must be supported by specific factual allegations sufficient to raise the right to relief above the speculative level. Simply asserting a legal conclusion, bereft of any supporting factual allegations, does not state a plausible claim for relief. Viewing the amended complaint in the light most favorable to the plaintiff, the court accepts that the portion of the YouTube video referenced in paragraph 63 and 64 of the complaint is the same as the one displayed via screenshots in paragraph 116 to 20, which has the same link. It shows Blair instructing her employee, Felix, to help me find Click, a former employee and now competing YouTuber, saying the R slur. 
in Sad Milk's raw audio, and offering to pay him $200 to find it. Sad Milk is a YouTube channel created and managed by Plaintiff Pyramid AMC Para 10. So, as we've discussed in a quick rundown, Felix was not an employee at the time. The work was not done for Pyramid. The income provided was a gift. The work was done for a separate LLC entirely, if she so chooses to argue that line of thought. Click was also never an employee. If he was, why isn't he being sued? I'm going to show an excerpt from the second claim of relief, which mostly pertains to myself, which is why it isn't fully delved into earlier. However, it reads as follows. 73. Upon information and belief, defendant is in breach of these arguments by sharing screenshots of company communications with defendant Oz, intending that he use the screenshots as part of a campaign to damage plaintiff's reputation as stated above in paragraph 63, Illuminati and Sad Milk at 2413. Defendant Felix has further established his intent to post additional content which will harm plaintiffs in a devastating manner. Blair within this lawsuit is specifically painting these communications as being directly related to company communications when they were not. I also did not organize a defamation campaign against Blair. She threw the mud first. The judge continues. Again, viewing the amended complaint in the light most favorable to the plaintiff, these allegations arguably state plausible claims for breach of both the NDA and the Felix Agreement. They arguably state a plausible claim for breach of the NDA in that they plausibly allege that Felix, without permission, shared with a third party pyramid information about company operations, as well as information regarding an individual's involvement in pyramid operations. They likewise arguably state a plausible claim for breach of the Felix Agreement. They allege that Felix, without permission, shared with a third party confidential information for the benefit of a third party. The confidential information disclosed is not, as Felix's counsel suggests, that Blair uses the Arsler in private. That would be a private matter rather than the company business. Rather, the potentially actionable conduct by Felix was his disclosure of internal company messages and operations, namely that Blair is instructing her employee to find potentially damaging information about a competing YouTuber. Click. That the information- Oh, ah, uh, this is, this is, I don't think this is, I mean, I am not a lawyer, obviously. If I was a lawyer, I'd be making a lot more money and I'd also be less happy with my life. So he turned that one around on you. But um, I'm not a lawyer, but I would be shocked if this holds up in court at all. Especially with the information we've been, we've seen revealed in this video. I, fe I think she's, I think she's screwed on this front about internal company messages and operations was allegedly disclosed through co-defendant and fellow employee Oz to click for use against Pyramid and Blair. I would like to reaffirm that Blair did state in points 120 and 121 that she uses it in private is a defamatory claim. It is my assumption that because of how much information is thrown around in the complaints, whether purposely or accidentally, has led to it being harder for all parties to follow her cattywampus timeline of misery. Felix's lawyer, with everything else to argue, and from what I could see, did not assert Felix was not involved with payment at this time. This is not a knock against Felix's counsel, only an observation to help explain more factors which would have left the judge to provide his ruling. Also, again, Felix provided evidence to counter a, in my opinion, false narrative Blair was spreading about a prior colleague. Felix reached out to me. Felix was slated for an interview in my original video, and I can only assume Blair pieced this together and would be paranoid about the information he had to tell, leading him to be directly included to the lawsuit as an attempt to muzzle him in what he had to say. This is a personal theory of mine that I have come to due to the facts that are in front of me. If this were false, she could easily prove the public narrative wrong. Instead, she's opted to take the legal route in an attempt to use her finances to crush her opposition. What I also need to stress is that the video which Felix would have been a part of would have fallen into the category of a journalistic piece. No different than what she structures on her channel. I suppose in her eyes it's fine when she puts others under the microscope, but not when others do the same to her. Even for her actions outside of Pyramid, which wouldn't be covered under NDA. Blair instructing her employee to find potentially damaging information about a competing YouTuber, Click. That information about internal company messages and operations was allegedly disclosed through co-defendant and fellow employee Oz to Click for use against Pyramid and Blair. While disclosing such tardy information to a competitor may not be a violation of the Uniform Trade Secrets Act, it could plausibly be a violation of the agreements that Felix signed as it disclosed to a competitor the internal operations of a company whose business arguably involved trolling for clicks and bringing down its competitors. As the complaint alleges large amounts of money were at stake.
This shows that the judge is under the impression, due to the information that Blair provided, Felix was an employee at this time, despite the evidence we discussed prior. The judge is under the impression that Clip was a competing YouTuber. This is why I stressed his content type being comedy and memes, as well as him being a prior colleague of Blair's. Click is not a direct competitor and does not occupy the same space or venue of YouTube that Blair does. In fact, Blair has done such a tremendous job at muddying the timeline and obfuscating her actions, it seems the judge is entirely unaware that Click's video was in self-defense against her accusations, and Felix was providing Click with documentation to defend his image from the heinous pedo-jacketing attempt that Blair had committed. Blair has successfully been able to rewrite history in the initial phases of this lawsuit to fit her narrative, and present herself as a YouTuber who is unjustly attacked out of nowhere by vindictive employees, when the reality is, is that Blair went on the attack with accusations so profoundly, in my opinion, fucking stupid, where, and I'm repetitive on this notion, not for the audience, but for the legal reasons, she accused a lawyer of plagiarism. Each bomber guy countered with her examples of plagiarism. While I cannot speak on the intentions of others, as I have stated, I spoke out to defend my prior colleagues as well as distance myself from Blair because I was receiving Discord messages. I did everything wrong and I indicted me. In stream that's, chats. that's what I got for you all out of this situation frantically asking, or in some cases demanding, that I make a statement on Illuminati, and if I supported her attacks on Legal Eagle because of my prior association with her. When people distanced themselves from Blair and spoke on their own personal experiences, she retorted with a 40 minute long she video can't, she literally, full of accusations. She literally can't even pull the Trump line because she's the one driving the lawsuit. She could drop it right now and it would be over, and she could just sit in her house with her dog and her Candles that are not going to sell, almost assuredly. ...and ammunition that she had been holding on to for nearly three years. As stated in the intro, the new GoFundMe being launched will be utilized to not only come to my legal aid, but all other parties in opposition to Blair. This of course includes Felix. His legal invoices will also be posted alongside mine as this case progresses. If Blair declines my offer in the outro, there will be more updates pertaining to this. All right, here's the outro. Let's see it. Here we are. The outro, per se. As I mentioned earlier, I make it publicly to put an end to this. To any questions beforehand regarding the new GoFundMe, if Blair does accept this offer, I will be refunding it in full, as I only plan to utilize that funding if she decides the lawsuit will be moving forward. Because of this, however, this does mean that for the next month, I'm on the hook for my own legal bills. And as of today, this is going to be a rough month, as this one's out of pocket, so it looks like it's the mini wheats diet for me. If this lawsuit continues, I know that on my end, I could be looking at anywhere from 4000 to possibly 10000 monthly, as seen by this invoice for the last two weeks. The reason for Ooh. this potential settlement offer is that I'm not thrilled at the idea of spending a majority of my 20s, possibly the next two years, stuck in legal litigation in opposition to Blair. I just want to be able to live my life. The stress from the lawsuit, the foreclosure, it feels nearly never ending and I'm tired of waking up in the middle of the night stressed with chest pain and dread. I'm tired of dreading every email notification. The legal system is exhausting. But while the legal and foreclosure stress have been very present and constant in my life, even with the foreclosure ending in December, it's not the only reason I'm considering this potential settlement agreement. In my personal life, there is an ongoing source of both grief and stress and factors that I'm still trying to process and have been unable to process because of everything going on around me. With keeping details sparse out of respect for my partner and with their approval, We've had to deal with the heartbreak of a miscarriage throughout all of this. Its occurrence was unexpected, and because of the day-to-day -day stress of the lawsuit, we've been unable to process, heal, and move forward from this loss. We've had to shelve these emotions and push forward, and it's been hard on both of us, and I just want the opportunity to heal with my partner in peace. And while I... Which is why I'm even considering giving Blair this settlement. I ask that you respect my privacy of myself and my partner until such a time that we are comfortable making details known. I'm not doing this for Blair. I'm doing this for my partner and I's future. If Blair doesn't accept the following offer, let alone negotiate, 
So be it. I have no problem with continuing forward. I have no problem with continuing to pursue this until the end, as I do not fear the outcome of the case, especially after the judge's recent orders. More on that if slash when part two is released. My settlement to you, Blair, would allow you to follow the morals that your channel has advocated for, or in your words, be dedicated to upholding your channel's values and delivering on your commitments. Or as this handy video you uploaded a week before you sent out cease and desist states. When something as horrible as this happens, people always come out and admit fault and tell the horrifying truth of their continued negligence and malpractice, right? Yeah, you're right, that never happens. What am I thinking? Instead, they usually do their best to hide everything and blame anyone but themselves, and wouldn't you know it, that's exactly what happened here too. My settlement offer is for you to drop the lawsuit, for all parties involved, even wonder, with prejudice. I won't file counterclaims and would no longer be required to upload the second part to this video. And what do you get? A chance to prove your side of the story, or even take accountability for your actions. If you proceed with this lawsuit, by the time that it's done, especially with what's left of the judge's order, there would be no platform for you to return to, as you still need to answer for not just me, but for everyone else you've harmed on this platform. It would be difficult to return to a platform with a label that you hypocritically participated in the very business tactics that you've reported to be in opposition of for the past four years. I'm offering you a chance to clear your name on a third party neutral platform. Think of it as a conversation. Rather than use the corporate tactic of bullying those who speak out against you, why not prove you're different from them? You've previously stated that you feel as though you dumb down your language too much and you allow people to fill in the gaps that don't actually exist. So, what? Okay, okay. I don't know what the context. Oh, this is okay. Okay, so this was the res this was the the fight with the with the click. A really dumb down my language to make it clear for many seemingly brain dead people. You mean your own audience? Okay, look. You do not ever have to hand it to Blair, but I think I always, for me, seeing someone have just blatant contempt for their audience is always incredibly funny, okay? That is just, these morons in my audience just won't get the message. They won't be manipulated by me because they're too brain dead. I hate them. Incredible language too much and you allow people to fill in the gaps that don't actually exist. So here's your chance. Prove everyone wrong. If you're interested in going the route of proving publicly why you're in the right to argue for your platform's right to existence, a discussion where all topics would of course need to be known by both parties before That is lit. No, you can't pull that on me. Sentient rat, you can't pull that on me. I d do nothing but praise my imps, in fact. Except for a few flare-ups when I get mad at an individual chatter, but that's because I'm keeping it to the individual. You don't know what it's like to feel my wrath, and you should pray that you never will. Because the day, you don't, you don't know the lengths to which I can entertainingly torment you, should I so desire it. If my audience ever wants to engage in an antagonist, antagonistic relationship with me, I'm going to win, okay? You are not going to win. A lawsuit that will drag on for the next few years will not call your name like you hope. If anything, it has only further damaged your reputation, Blair, especially because you're suing the two parties who have publicly said the least. And I know you know this. No PR firm in the world could save you if you continue this lawsuit. Even if you did win, from what I've seen, you would just be seen as a bully who abused the legal system. You could also use this opportunity that I would be giving you to take accountability. The rough outline that I'm proposing, and I am open to negotiations on these terms within reason. Plaintiff must dismiss all claims against all parties with prejudice once amicable terms are set forth. Plaintiff and myself will agree on a third party who we both independently trust to host a fair conversation. Their responsibility will be to ensure that each person is not spoken over and is given a chance to clear their mind. 
Plaintiffs may also take this time to take accountability for their actions instead if they wish. Legal fees of either party will not be sought out, and this will be taken for the loss that it is. I can provide no personal guarantee. Wow, this is a, um, this is a extreme show of good faith right here, this portion. Being like, yes, I'll eat the legal fees thus far is, um, is pretty huge for Oz to be willing to do, given that Oz is very clearly at a financial disadvantage here. Wild. Guarantee in either circumstance that you, Blair, would be able to repair your public image or reputation. That is up to you. However, I am giving you the opportunity that your lawsuit will most certainly not. I would be open to additional terms being presented within reason. This settlement offer must be accepted, if at all, by a communication in writing delivered to my lawyer not later than the end of office hours June 7th or it will be withdrawn without further notice. If my lawyer does not receive a response by the end of office hours on June 7th, I will assume that you've declined this offer and I will proceed as planned with legal proceedings. We are open to negotiations within reason. I am- So that would have been three days ago. Do we know if any update has been posted? I don't know if we'd get to know that right away. Blair won't. She's a narcissist. This would feel like a loss for her. I, I agree that my inclination is to believe that Blair will not accept this um, because that is what a reasonable person would do. And nowhere in this entire incident has Blair, in my opinion, shown even a drop of reasonability, but rather just a raw desire to punish those who wronged her in her mind, wronged her. But, uh, Travis T says, I've been in Oz's legal fee streams for the last few days. Blair is currently considering the offer. Wow. Only giving Blair this settlement offer because of the events which have occurred in my private life. If she declines, so be it. I have no qualms with proceeding with part two. Okay. Pinned comment. Update. For now, all that I can really state is that Blair has shown interest in talking, but that's really where it starts and ends. More information will be uh, available end of next week. So yeah, that would be this week. We can probably expect to hear some kind of an update. I, I truly hope for the sake of everyone involved, that this is the end of this, I would be very surprised if she accepted the goal um, or if she accepted the offer. But I truly hope that she does for everyone involved. Um, it, it is a exceedingly generous offer. It's exceedingly generous because it does actually give her a public win condition. If she were to stop this and make and and make some sort of public statement, uh, you know, ending the former beefs, it is actually conceivable that at some point in the future she could uh, bounce back and make content in some form or another. I don't know how successful she'll be. It's going to be a rough road. But if basically if everyone says we're done, we're putting the past behind us, we've reached an agreement. Um, that would mean that there aren't going to be people going, oh, do you remember when this happened? You know what I mean? So it's exceedingly, uh, it's exceedingly generous to, to her. Additionally, the current state of affairs, if she continues with this lawsuit and loses, the likelihood that she's going to have to pay a mountain of legal fees that's pretty bad. That's that's a that's a the likelihood is pretty high that she's going to have to pay a mountain of legal fees in addition to any other damages that are decided on. So it might be a financial win for her as well. That said, it's not an ego win for her. And um and I won't lie, it seems to me like um it seems to me 
like uh, uh, most of her decisions through this entire saga have been motivated by uh, seeking out an ego victory over anything else. Obviously not a financial victory because she is completely uh, self-detonated when it comes to finances. Ashmar says, Felix uh, commented under the video as well saying, I'm flattered that Redacted thinks I'm more influential than Bo H Bomber guy. I guess I'll have to start making my own eight hour deep dives into very specific bit bits of media. Oh yeah, that claim is wild. The, I, the claim that um, all of her financial losses are solely the cause of, of, of a person who leaked a, a, who didn't even leak in this particular context, but simply, I guess it is a, t a form of a leak, but it's not like it was a super confidential conversation. They spoke openly and shared evidence of what they were asked to do outside of an explicit contract. And she's trying to say that that person is at fault for all of her financial losses, which is just seems absurd. This lawsuit really seems flimsy to me. Now I'm not a lawyer, but it seems very flimsy to me. I would be shocked if she was able to win in its current state. Um, in addition to all of the foibles and errors and fumbles, um, the 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 claims uh, uh, the claims that she made are seem to be founded on obviously um, non factual information. If she gets a conservative judge who knows little about internet culture, they might listen to her BS. I'm hoping the judge isn't a piece of shit. Well, I don't think we have any evidence to think that the judge is. I think this video um, would do a very good job explaining to even an unfamiliar audience what's going on. And also, I mean, lawyers' jobs are to talk to judges. I don't think a judge is going to sort of like willy-nilly rule in her favor in this particular case. And I do think, at least from my uh, lay observation, um, I, I do think that the errors that have been made indicate that her case is on, uh, is on rough waters. I am really hoping that, uh, that, that this case can come to an end uh, as quickly as possible and as peacefully as possible. I think that everyone involved um, has been put through enough. Um, I think that uh, this this case, from my perspective, seems to be extremely spitefully driven. It seems to be an attempt at any cost to punish those who uh, who wronged uh, her, uh, her being Blair here, obviously. Um, and it does not seem like there's really any you know, productive or uh, uh, or even self-preservation-oriented future uh, uh, for for where this case is going. None of the people who are being sued have shown any indication, uh, any interest whatsoever in doing anything but basically laying laying down a a line of hey, we were hurt. We don't want to see anybody else hurt. These are the ways that we felt we were hurt. Whereas Blair's um, from the very beginning, Blair has been on the mega offensive, uh, attacking people for all sorts of allegations. And I think a lot of these are uh, have been, as, as we've covered in my coverage of this, um, you know, uh, proven to be not valid. Um, I, I think it's really unfortunate just how much uh, Oz and Wonder and The Click have been put through uh, in this situation, um, for someone who is, uh, so clearly, uh, engaging in multiple levels of, uh, dishonest, manipulative behavior. Um, I don't think that Blair's channel is ever going to bounce back. I don't think Illuminati is ever going to bounce back. I'm not going to rule out the possibility that she could ever rebrand and make something else on the internet. Um, but especially as it stands right now, there is no path for her to, um, to have a public face. Her community was huge, and she burned her community. 
Her community are the ones who are unhappy. Her own viewers are the ones who are unhappy with her. And again, all you need to see that that's true is the state of her channel. Um, her channel has completely hit rock bottom with regard to viewership. Her own subscribers ditched. It's not like, uh, you know, people from outside were attacking her channel and making it impossible for her to post videos. Her own viewers lost faith in her for numerous reasons. Not, you know, outside of this conflict, of course, there's all of the, the plagiarism evidence that was shown by uh, H-Bomber guy. It's a... Uh, it's a wild situation. I can only hope that a miracle will happen and that Illuminati will realize that self-destruction will not make her happier uh, and will be wasteful, unenjoyable, uh, and not strategic. But my personal opinion is that she has not shown uh, a clear judgment on this type of thing in the past. So unfortunately, I think it is very likely that she will um, that she will continue to pursue this all the way until she hits a uh, hits a brick wall, so to say. Um, I do think that it's encouraging that uh, Oz Media has said that she's willing to discuss the settlement offer. Um, I think that the video was a smart move, at least from my perspective, not as a lawyer. I think that it makes a very clear statement of a abundantly generous offer to hopefully end, um, you know, uh, end this war. Um, but uh, and I can I can also completely understand why Oz Media would at least make the attempt. Um, you know, Oz Oz never went on the on the offensive here. Um, Oz got involved mostly uh, to simply clarify, uh, you know, things that he believed were not true in defense of his longtime collaborators, co-workers, and friends. People who used to be friends and collaborators and co-workers with Illuminati, too. Um, yeah, what a nightmare. I, 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 I hope that everybody involved in this can can be able to move on to a, to a new and, and freer chapter of their lives. I, I, I can't overstate, you know, uh, just how wasteful this entire saga has been. Um, and also uh, how illustrative it is of, of, the, of the current state of, of, uh, of YouTube. That, that it is a, a, unfortunately, a bit of a wild west where a lot of young people come into the space hoping to be able to make a, a living, with, you know, starry-eyed and, and ready to work hard. And then there's people like Blair hanging around every corner looking to exploit people for all that they're worth. And, uh, and then uh, to wrap them up in a nightmare of litigation if anything goes wrong ever. I just, I can't imagine be, li, being wonderstruck, you know, or Oz and, and getting, you know, getting wrapped up in a, in a collaborative meme video. I mean, Sad Milk, the thing at the center of all this was Reddit React content. It wasn't just that, but it was a bunch of Reddit React content. It was fun stuff. It was people goofing around making memes on the internet. <sighs> anyway, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this update uh, uh, to the, the long Illuminati saga. And make sure to check out, if you haven't, my other Drama Mama videos. Um, we don't do them all that often for obvious reasons. Um, we want to do it when there's something important to be talked about, when I believe that there is something that we can pull away from it, and when I think it's an, a, a, an impactful situation that's more than just base internet drama. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure that you're subscribed down below.